there is a subtle but important connection that uh, links three apparently different digital phenomena. The uh, email newsletter that has re-emerged recently as an important fundamental communications method after we thought social media would dominate. The surprising popularity of short form video across different platforms and the ability of infographics to capture our attention as we look at the details uh, of the phenomena they analyze and represent. The link that connects these three is interoperability or lack of and human effort in creating genuine connections. My name is David Orban and this is The Context. Social media promised unfettered access to our networks, whether professional or personal. We eagerly connected relationships, friends, relatives, our families on the various platforms. And as new platforms were born, we adopted them in order to experiment and understand their similarities and differences relative to the ones that came before. There are dominant social networks today, but they are invariably exposing us to their downsides, whether this, it is algorithmic exploitation or simply the fact that as our networks become numerous, the feed of updates that uh, each platform represents just cannot humanly transfer the information in its entirety and necessarily has to be filtered based on criteria that may not be completely transparent to each of us. The dissatisfaction uh, with this and the inability of the platforms uh, to gain and maintain the trust of the users leads to the phenomena of new ones emerging and the experimentation, but also very naturally maintaining the old ones while we understand if the new ones work. And as a consequence, cross-posting what we want to share from one to the next. It would be ideal to be able to maintain uh, our identities and make sure that the information is available at the highest possible granularity from one platform to the next. For example, uh, if I uh, include a URL linking to a website in my post, I expect that URL to be, well, at least clickable, but also, if possible, when I embed or point to the post from another platform, I want that URL to be clearly visible. That is not at all happening. And similarly, other things that one would expect and intuitively feel valuable are impossible on today's platforms. Here is another example. I am at David Orban on most platforms. But if you post and um, tag me, the post embedded on another platform will completely lose its ability to actively point to my profile on the new platform, let alone if, for whatever reason, my profile account on the new platform happens not to be the same as on the originating one. Our identities are fragmented and interoperability in the posts of platforms is completely lost. 
email emerged exactly because it is the protocol underlying it, SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, is interoperable, is universally accepted by every mail server and mail client. It hasn't been broken, it hasn't been uh, made proprietary by the platforms. And when I write an email, the subject line, the body of the email will be faithfully delivered to your inbox. Now, nothing is perfect. It could still happen that it ends up in your spam folder. And of course, you can decide whether to read or not to read the email. However, when you subscribe to my newsletter, the email address is going to be mine. The relationship is going to be maintained even if I change the newsletter provider. That is what I recently did, moving from MailChimp to Substack. And well, if in the future I will move to another newsletter provider again, the list of subscribers receiving it will be something that I own and that I will be able to move over. Short form videos are interoperable in a very weird and different sense because they have become so successful primarily because of TikTok, the other platforms, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, have all copied the ability of posting reels or short videos, whatever they call them. It is the same thing. A video shot vertically that uh, is typically a minute or less. Even if today, paradoxically, TikTok is pushing creators to <laughs> post videos that are up to 15 minutes, as if it were something very, very new. Well, it is just uh, to uh, really uh, mess uh, with the, the other platforms uh, and uh, with the creators too. But if you record a video that is one minute or less in a vertical form, then you will be able to post it on the various platforms more or less unchanged. Recently, I started doing exactly that and I'm very proud of having found my TikTok voice. Uh, you can check it out on all of those platforms, including YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, X, LinkedIn. I ran a little survey if my LinkedIn followers actually wanted me to post those videos. And the answer was yes, so I'm for the moment doing it. Now, the interoperability of these videos is still not perfect. I cannot tag anyone. Hashtags are working, but um, I am not particularly fond of them anyway. I am not currently using hashtags uh, to make my videos more discoverable. So we will see. Now, the reason why these videos work, apart from TikTok Envy by the other platforms, is linked to the third point that I want to cover today. Infographics. I used to hate them. <laughs> I really didn't like infographics. And the reason is because often they illustrate data-driven uh, graphics in a very cumbersome manner where I feel that they subtract rather than add value uh, to what pure data is representing. The silly illustrations, whether they are uh, column charts by hamburgers, which is my favorite worst example, or um, whatever kind of um, additional uh, cute uh, little component uh, that hides uh, information uh, rather than visualizing it best. But the fundamental fact that 
the vast majority of infographics is not interactive. It is a simple JPEG uh, that uh, uh, completely uh, kills by uh, flattening the information, your ability to dig deeper. The surprising component, however, that I think contributed uh, to its uh, success uh, is the fact that uh, there is and uh, there was a human effort uh, in creating it. It is hard, or rather it was hard, to create infographics in an automated fashion. So when you see an infographics, you need to invest a little effort in understanding and decoding it, uh, what the charts mean, uh, what is the uh, information component that is purely of entertainment value and what is the component that actually is illustrating the underlying data. But what you can be really sure about today is that there was someone that invested a similar amount of effort and probably more in creating the infographic itself. It is the kind of effort that goes into a video. So if this is true, the test in the coming months is going to be the evolution, which is practically guaranteed, of both videos created by AI as well as infographics created by AI. How will we judge them? Will we treasure them as much as before? Or will we learn to uh, discount their value and make it kind of disappear in the background noise uh, in our infosphere in order to be able to keep concentrating on the higher value add human relationships. We will see and uh, I will be curious in both uh, exploring and uh, actively experimenting with the tools that uh, will make me and you understand what is going on, what is the broader context of the evolution of these tools. Thank you.